the ASEAN political security community uh, actually is not about you know the uh, internal uh, conflict. It's not about the intrastate uh, conflict. It's basically designed to promote you know interstate cooperation, especially in order to uh, uh, prevent you know uh, conflicts among member states of of, of ASEAN. Uh, meanwhile, you know, if you look at the R2P uh, principle, you know, it really uh, address you know the need to uh, prevent the occurrence of uh, 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 four types of crimes. Uh, most of them actually usually happen, you know, within you know, a domestic uh, context of, of, of member state. So in that context, I don't think that the ASEAN political and security community actually is a good platform, you know, to uh, address uh, the uh, R2P uh, situations. However, there are some uh, elements within the uh, APSC that can actually uh, be used as a platform you know, to uh, uh, increase the capacity of the ASEAN member state you know, in order to prevent the occurrence of the four crimes mentioned by the R2P principle. Uh, Indonesia, I think, you know, has been consistently actually support, uh, supportive, you know, of the uh, principle, you know, especially uh, during the uh, debate, you know, at the United Nations. Uh, uh, even though, of course, you know, it, it really uh, uh, gave emphasis more on the first pillars, you know, and also the second pillars, uh, which are the uh, responsibility to protect and also the responsibility of the international community to assist, you know, state, you know, to uh, strengthen their capacity uh, to, you know, to prevent the occurrence of uh, 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 four types of crime. Uh, however, you know, uh, Indonesia has also made it very clear that, you know, uh, the uh, use of force, you know, might be necessary only in extreme cases and only as the last resort. So in that context, I think uh, we are not that different, you know, from uh, uh, other uh, ASEAN member states with regard to uh, the acceptance and also our understanding of the uh, uh, principle. Well, when the case of East Timor uh, uh, took place, and of course, you know, the international community, you know, did not yet uh, uh, have this uh, R2P uh, principle. Uh, but if you look at, if you look back what happened at the time, you know, especially, you know, because of this uh, 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 maybe an inability of Indonesia, you know, to stop, you know, these uh, riots and also uh, the violence, you know, in, in East Timor after the referendum and, 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 and of course, you know, the uh, uh, intervention. Uh, by the uh, international community, especially you know the uh, uh, forces you know under under Australia, it, it, it could it actually led you know to the uh, stopping of the uh, uh, riots and also violence in East Timor at the time. But however, I think you know we need to, to, to emphasize as well that was done with the Indonesian government's consent. So you know in, in, you know, in that context, you know. Uh, I think what is not yet clear, you know, whether, you know, the, say, invocations of the Pillars 3 of the R2P also requires consent, you know, from the uh, uh, concerned uh, state or not.